Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. All right. This is from Alicia. Alicia, where are you? There you are. Hi, Alicia. Okay, Alicia. Uh, she asks, where's my soulmate? Alicia, that's a very good question, and it's quite commonly asked of me. And your soulmate can be any place. And basically, what I do is I help you decide on what your attitude is going to be when you go out to ordinary places so that when you recognize him or when you meet him, you can recognize him. So he could be at the grocery store, he could be at Starbucks. You've already heard Susan's story that he could be in the rental car line. So, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very good. Hope that answers your question, Alicia. She's looking a little doubtful. Well, you'll see. You'll get some other questions that might help you uh, make this make you a believer. It's true. Okay, the next one's Annabelle. Annabelle, can you identify yourself, please? Like, oh, there she is. Hi, Annabelle. Hey, Annabelle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when will I meet him? She wants to know, when will I meet him? That's a very good question as well, Annabelle. And the idea of when you will meet them is, de is determined by many factors. When you're ready, how active you are. I teach an online, to the use of online sites. So we can do a blitz strategy that can get you to meet a whole bunch of guys and then you can make the decision. So it depends on you. What was that? Is that a blitz? A blitz strategy. A blitz wow. strategy. This is war, I'll tell you. <laughs> blitz. Not okay. war, just uh, using the numbers in your okay. advantage. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, oh, numbers blitz. Okay. Uh, is that it then? Yes. Okay. All right. There you go. Uh, now we have Nelly. Nelly. Hi, Nelly. Hey, okay. Nelly. Uh, Nelly asks, What can I do that? You've got sloppy handwriting, Nelly. Uh, what can I do? What can I do to trust that he is the one? She underlined the one. The one and trust. What I like to do is to have you know what the definition for your soulmate is. And that's the process that we do. So that when you meet men, you can hold that list up in your head and, and as you experience different situations with them, you'll say, oh, well, he has this quality, that quality, that. that's my soulmate. Especially if you feel in your heart and in your gut that he is reliable, trustworthy, has integrity, and someone who you would love to spend a lot of time with. And did you tell me earlier that's also somebody that you know wants to help you be the best you can be and likewise you want to help that person be the best they can be? That's another characteristic that's very, very important as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, she's already sitting down. Okay, good. I think she seems pretty happy there. Um, hope that helped. Um, this one's from Mary Dane. Do we have more than one soulmate, she's asking. Do we have more than one soulmate? Oh, Mary for Jane? sure. There you are. Okay. <laughs> Mary Jane, great question. You have more than one soulmate. There are She's raising many. her fingers. Three. She's three, three, she says. Good for you. <laughs> Unfortunately, in our country, we have to make choices on just one for legal at a time, purposes. At a time. <laughs> so with these three, what you would do is hold up the qualities against that definition that you have in your head and decide which experience you prefer to experience with that particular man at that point in life at that point in yeah. life yeah. yeah there was a time in my life that i thought that i made a list right you talk about in your book the list you make mm -hmm. maybe the list isn't reasonable because it's really defining the perfect woman rather than the perfect man <laughs> well sometimes i've noticed that that happens with these lists and if they're not working you might take a look at the qualities on the list if you have too many words like I want him to be sweet and gentle <laughs> and intuitive and caring and loving. Those are all feminine qualities. Yeah. And in our society, men have those qualities, but they aren't programmed to show them like a woman would show them. Yeah. You want them to be a good lead dancer. You yeah. want them to. <laughs> to yeah. Um, well, I, one of mine, I, I only made a list one time. It was because someone asked me to, a couple, a, a couple friend of mine asked mm. me to. And I, rem I don't remember the list, but I do remember this. At that time, I said... I want him to be a good dresser. Yeah. And at that point in my life, I was really into clothes. Yeah. So that's I think important. That, that's 
probably why, because I liked the clothes. <laughs> a lot of men aren't really, they'll dress nicely if they have to, but that's not really their you know, specialty. Top priority. Not top priority, yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, you're right. I think that, that really that really brought it home for me. My husband wants to know, well, what was your list? When I brought it up, he <laughs> said, it doesn't matter. You weren't on it. I didn't know you then. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that brings up the point that the list changes. Yeah depending on where you are in yeah. your life. And you know what? The fr one of the first things I did after we got married was go out shopping for him and buy him clothes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I still important. Clothes. He needed it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because he had been single for a long time and oh. hadn't gone shopping for himself. Anyway, so enough of that. So, okay, so, so the, uh, I think that answered her question plus some other ones. I'm having fun with this. Okay, and now this one is from Monica. Monica. Oh, Monique. I'm sorry, Monique. Your friend is Monique. <laughs> Hi, Monique. <laughs> Hello. Oh, she ran out of room because she had all these question marks behind it. Oh, uh, how do I know when he's the one? When he's the one? How do you know when he's the one? Well, that's very similar to one of the other questions. But knowing when he's the one, I like to look at it as kind of like the dials on um, an old-fashioned um, stereo and it had those markers for volume and tone and all of those, except you would place it with very important qualities that are important to you. <laughs> and the general definitions for soulmates are men who are reliable, have integrity, chemistry. You can depend on them. And you can throw in your own other that's important to you. And when they're like at a five on a scale of one to five, and it's all fives across the board, then you know that's the time. He's the one. Yeah. Push that button as save. <laughs> you want to put that into memory. Oh, thank you very much. That's great. All right, the last one we've only got, this is the only to have time for one more. Actually, that's all she's collected because that's what I asked her for, six. And uh, the lucky last one is Julie. Julie, there she is. Hi, Julie. Hey, Julie. Oh, uh, and Julie wants to know, why is my list, we already talked about, why is my list not working? It's very important that you take a look at these lists, ladies. If, as I said, they have too many qualities on them that have to do with women, then what you're describing is the perfect woman. And the last time I checked, men don't come across as perfect women. <laughs> no. And they'll Not never the come across. Marry. <laughs> no. <laughs> and they'll never come across as perfect women. So it might be time to readjust that list so that it reflects manly qualities. That's kind of hard for women though. I mean, because women know women because they are one and they're best friends ever since they were little, the women and so how do you go about trying to decide, since you're not a man, what a good man is? For me, a good man is someone who is a protector and a provider. Those mm -hmm. are the two basic qualities of a good man. Mm -hmm. And so, but, you, but, but they don't here show don't it. Be taken care of women here, in, at least around here too. Yeah. I'm sorry, in other parts of the country, because it's all for everywhere. Um, many women, especially here, um, are self-sufficient, and especially by the time you're, this isn't your book for people over 35, they've been taking care of themselves quite well, thank you, for a long time. You so. bring up an excellent point, and I'm going to continue my thought here. Okay. All right. So women generally over 35 don't need to be protected or provided for. Mm -hmm. Men over 35 realize that because they're very smart. Ah, okay. But the nature of man, the psychology of man, is that is how he's programmed. Okay. To behave in a relationship is mm -hmm. to provide protection and to um, nurture. So if a man is going to open a door for you, it's one way to show that he wants to provide for you, make things easier for you. He knows you can open the door yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he wants to do that because that's part of his nature. Mm -hmm. And there are various other ways that they show that they care for a, a woman mm -hmm. who is important to 